Hello everyone and welcome back to IMO Reviews. Today we're discussing Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Jumping straight into the positives of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, I do think the movie is still bright and popping with wonderful imagination and some really solid animation as well. The action set pieces are so much fun, as you'd expect from a Spider-Man movie. I also think that the voice cast do a brilliant job here. They are all a very good fit for the character that they are representing. I thought the humour was still pretty solid here. It's not as funny as as that first film, but I did chuckle in a few spots throughout. I also enjoyed the depth of this universe and the wild, unexpected left turns that it would regularly take, especially in that first half. It constantly kept me on my toes and very excited to see what else they might do. And I also appreciate that they try to do something a bit loftier with this premise, and that's really hard to do. Multiverses and such can be troublesome plots and story threads to follow. And sadly, in trying to go bigger with it, I don't always think it worked. And that does sadly bring us to the negatives. Say it with me, everybody. Pacing! It's awful. It felt like it was going to end, and then it doesn't. And then it feels like it's going to end, and then it doesn't. And then it feels like it's going to end, and then you look at your watch and you realise there's another 20 minutes still to go. And what's worse is, had they structured it better, had they cut off a lot of the fat and streamlined it, there is a 10 out of 10 knockout sequel in here somewhere. I personally don't think this needed to be part one of two. You could have just had the whole thing play out right here in one movie. It's the unnecessary fat and waffle that keeps it from doing so. And because it needs to explain everything all the time, it loses its frenetic energy and it constantly feels like it's hitting the brakes when it really doesn't need to. And because there's so much going on, you actively forget some of the things that had been set up. I was enjoying the villain, The Spot. I thought he had an interesting dynamic with Spider-Man and it was a very solid voice performance as well, but you literally forget his existence. He is built up to be the be-all and end-all, and then you don't see him for what feels like a pretty solid hour. I also found the colour palette for Gwen Stacy's world to be quite ugly and distracting, with its overtly dripping paint schemes and hard colour changes. Just constantly pulled me out of the moment and made me pay attention to that, rather than the gripping conversation that I'm really meant to be emotionally invested in. And on that note, I personally feel like her story not only feels inconsequential, but I'd also argue that it feels like it's in a different film altogether. In hindsight, looking back at this film, yeah, you can cut pretty much all of Gwen Stacy's drama. The story doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. When we were walking out of this film and I was talking about it with Mrs. IMO, it really didn't take long for us to stumble upon potential plot holes or explanations that the film has given not quite making sense in contrast to what the film shows us. I even think some of the decisions made by the other Spider-Men and women are egregious. I do not believe that Peter Parker would ever be that hellbent in his beliefs about something that is not very clear or that black and white. I think it's a mess. It's a fun mess, but it is still a mess. And it doesn't need to be, and that's what's so frustrating about this film. I can see the film they wanted to make, but they didn't kill their darlings, and instead, they just keep everything. And because they keep everything, my god, it feels so bloated, and sometimes it even feels a little bit confused on what it's actually trying to achieve. I might be pushing my luck here, but I actually think this sequel is detrimental to the first film. We rewatched the first film the night before going to see Across the Spider-Verse, and I can confirm it is still a perfect 10 out of 10 that absolutely holds up and hits all of its marks whilst justifying its existence. That first movie is all about an everyday kid not knowing his place in the world, but wanting to be something as important and needed as Spider-Man, and in turn Spider-Man offers out a hand and says, anyone can be Spider-Man, and it's great. This one kinda undoes that in a few spots and narrative choices, and it doesn't hit its emotional beats as well as the first one, and I can't say I was ever moved as much as I was by the first one, and I can't even say that this one really justifies its existence. 
like the first one. So I'm going to give Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I'm probably going to get some hate for this. Every single review I have seen for this movie is just knock out 5 stars, 10 out of 10. And I'm going to put it out there. I think you're being caught up in the source. I think when you step back from this movie and rewatch it at home, I think you're going to see that it's actually quite messy and problematic. It's fun, it looks great, and it is a good night out for the family with a bit of popcorn at the cinema. It's better than sitting at home and watching Holby City, I'll say that much. But is it the first 10 out of 10 this year? Sadly not, and I really wanted it to be. Thank you for watching this review. Please be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and please do hit the comment section as well. Have you seen Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't had enough of this crazy ginger, well, you can always click on these suggested videos right here and get yourself lost in an IMO wormhole. But if not, take care, and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.